let it go. Coffee is strong and useful then. For God and country, really pledge we all. Led by the flag for which we stand. Blue for the man that seeks the good and true. Red for our promise in the king. White for the glory of a heart that's pure. Bright with an ever shining flame. Our mama said, We be hail. Don't give the earth and grace success. With truth and love will conquer all. For God our land and SFS. Alma Mater, be be hail. Don't give the earth and grace success. With truth and love will conquer all. For God our land and SFS. Dr. Katie Thomas and the staff of St. Francis Jesus College Nagpur. I, Ms. Surbhi Valde, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science and your host of this session. I extend a warm welcome to our delegate speaker and dear students for webinar on Know Everything About Study Abroad, which is organized by Training and Placement Sir of St. Francis Jesus College Nagpur. I feel privileged to introduce our esteemed institution, St. Francis Research College. It was established in 1956 by Catholic Archdiocese of Nagpur. It is situated in surroundings of Seminary Hills. Our college is aggregated as a grade institute with the CGPA score of 3.23. Believe in yourself. You are braver than you think, more talented than you know, and capable of more than you imagine. Words said by Roy Bennett. Today, webinar on know about know everything about study abroad. I feel huge delight to introduce our speaker, Mr. Akash Singh. Akash Singh sir has done his master's in biotechnology, science communication. Certificates in General Management, Managerial Economics, Business Communication, Data Analytics, Digital Marketing. He is Marketing Manager at VIEC Study Abroad Nagpur and also Marketing Director at Minds Cloud Technology Private Limited. Sir is Professor in Genetics and Bioinformatics at Rajiv Gandhi Biotechnology Center, RTMNU Nagpur. Now, I request Mr. Akar Singh, sir, to please guide and motivate our students. Please, sir. Thank you so much, Surbhi. <clears throat> I hope I am audible and also visible to everyone. Yes, sir. Okay. So, the sound matters right now. Uh, I don't know visibility is and 
how many of you would want to see me but then obviously uh, uh, we would want to take this presentation ahead as soon as possible so first of all uh, thank you to the host and then uh, thanks to all the faculty members all the seniors everybody who has joined in uh, on this uh, friday morning i know it is a holiday for a lot of people and still if a lot of people have joined it means a lot so quickly without any discussions we will move on to the presentation and then we'll come back to the discussion so i'll just share my screen I hope the presentation is visible to everyone. Yes, sir, it is visible. Okay. So uh, we are naming this presentation as Destination Abroad, and whenever somebody says the word Destination Abroad, this is the kind of image that everybody has in their mind that we are basically sailing through certain uh, <coughs> cool waters and sitting down, sipping. uh at coffee and then listening to an old song but then uh, uh, we at vic would want to break this image and we would want to put it put in an academic image into the mind of students that studying abroad or probably moving abroad is not about enjoying life or not about uh, uh, moving through uh, beautiful scenery but it is also about gaining a lot of education gaining a lot of purpose in life and gaining a lot of insights into what people are doing across the world okay so as we move ahead through this presentation i'll try to break the myth that we have with relation to education in india and then also with relation to education abroad and how this can become an achievable dream for a lot of students so a lot of people obviously ask this question whether we should be studying in india or, or studying in abroad so a majority of you people are already doing your undergraduate studies or for that matter india mein jisko bolte hain graduate studies already in india and you have an option open to move for your masters for your phd's outside of india into countries which have a better academic reputation as compared to india but then obviously this question arises and then uh, one of the most biggest problems that arises uh, with these questions is that should we take this decision should we take this step because it becomes one of the most life changing uh, life altering decisions crucial decisions of your life so we'll try and alter your uh, understanding about this if you had to do a masters in india even after your 12th standard you had this question if you had to do an undergraduate study and then now if you want to do a phd or a masters in india what are the dream institutions to do it so uh, there are iits if you are bsc students you can give a jam exam a joint entrance examination iit jam and then you can get into a msc uh, into an iit or you can give, give a gate examination and based on a gate examination you can do an mtech in iits then there are nits national institute of technologies so if you are computer engineers or if for that matter if you are computer science graduates bca graduates bcca graduates you can get into iits or nits to do your mtechs uh, if you want to get into a more research oriented approach then there are indian institute of science there is just one indian institute of science there are a lot of laboratories of csir post your uh, MSCs you can get into CSI laboratories and do a junior research fellowship with them. If you are looking forward to do an MBA, the most primary institutes that you dream of are Indian Institutes of Management. Now, the total institutes that I have listed, including the IITs, IIMs, uh, the CSI laboratories, the IISC, it is very astonishing to know that the total number of seats that are available in these institutions at the master's level is something around ten. 10000 to 12000 10000 to 12000 is not even the number of students who are appearing for a graduate examination in nagpur university this year har saal nagpur se there are more than 18000 graduates who are coming out so even if these iits is graduates over here or you will be finishing your computer science this is the computer science department of monash university at australia currently so they have departments for every every uh, different field for every uh, option that opens up they have different departments and beautiful infrastructure for all the courses that they offer this is just one example of monash university in australia 
Now, let me give you a glimpse of what are the top ranking universities of the world. Currently, the first ranked university is MIT in USA. Second is Stanford. Then there is Harvard. All United States. Then at number four, you have University of Oxford, UK. Then you have California Institute of Technology, again Caltech in US. Then you have Zurich, Switzerland, University of Cambridge, UK, and then UCL in UK. Why did I want to share this? I wanted to share this because top 10, top 20, top 30, top 40, top 50 global rankings may be Indian institution. Nahi hai. Top 100 may be koi Indian institution. Nahi hai. The nearest that an Indian institution has gotten is into the top 200, which is IIT Delhi. And to get into IIT Delhi is a huge challenge. But what if I tell you to get into an MIT or a Stanford, you need only one tenth or one fifth of the preparation that you need to get into IIT. You'll be amazed. Okay. IIT Bombay ranks 152 globally. Currently, IIT Delhi has also gotten into the top 200. But there are no, no Indian institutions in the top 10, 50 or 100 rankings in the world. Okay. IIT Bombay, the MTech or the MSc total seats are not more than 100. So to get into those 100, you need to clear N number of exams and N number of competitive uh, things have to be cleared until you get into IIT Bombay. Not many people actually get into it. So why should you be studying abroad? I mean, does these institutions, do these institutions offer anything which is better than Indian institutions? Is there something better than your IITs or IIMs? Yes, there are things that are better than them. These institutions abroad are offering a world-class education. They are basically operating in a diverse environment with cutting edge technology. The institution's photo that I showed you uh, belongs to Australia. Australia is the country where university se Wi-Fi discover, a Wi-Fi invent hua hai, jahan se drone technology invent hui hai, jahan se aapka jo internet ghar mein chal raha hai, uski technology ke upar mein unhone advanced level of work kiya hai. Uh, the institutions that I showed you in the list, Stanford, Oxford, MIT, Caltech, these are the places from where your COVID vaccines have come out. If you know, Covishield is the vaccine that we are using. It's basically a byproduct of Oxford University. And then it has been produced by Indian institutions, by uh, the Serum Institute at Pune. But the invention of this vaccine, the creation of this vaccine has been done by University of Oxford. So these are institutions that create new inventions, that create new Nobel laureates every year. Okay. Unfortunately, this kind of environment or this kind of setup is currently not in place in India. There will be certain times when India will also reach that place, but currently we have not reached there. And this is a little unfortunate. You focus on practical knowledge because most of the uh, syllabus that is created in these institutions is definitely based on inputs taken from industries, on inputs taken from industrial heads. And for that matter, a lot of industrial heads uh, people from prominent industries in the world come and teach in these universities and that is why the students have that diverse background. There is a flexibility to change area of study if you get into a master's in computer science and then probably down the line in your second semester or your third semester, you want to change your subject to project management or something related to computer science but then which is not core programming, you can do that. There are options to take, absolutely varied options like uh, music and metallurgy or mechanical engineering and guitar classes both at the same time. And for that matter, if you are a sportsman or you are a musician or you do anything else, all those credits will also be entered into your final examination result. Okay. So nothing goes waste. Industry driven courses, all the curriculums are made definitely by uh, people from the industry. So nothing goes waste. Uh, unfortunately, in Nagpur, I am also teaching and I know that since the last 15 years, at least in fields like computer science or biotechnology or IT, the syllabus has not been updated. So this is like a very problematic thing with our university. And this is true for all universities in India, that there is no syllabus updation taking place. And you will be learning something that is already outdated. And when you get into industry, you get to know that up to ye wali technology kaami nahi karti hai aur ab humko jo padhaya gaya hai, wo 15, 20 years purana hai, right? And then you have to waste your time by doing courses outside of your university, outside of your college. Studying abroad is transformative. Yes, you will be living with people in a completely new environment, in a completely new weather, a new climate, with people of different nationalities, probably nationalities that you do not like, people from countries that you do not like, but then you will be living with them. You will be working in an environment that is completely alien and foreign to you. 
and not only living but then you will also be earning money and that too in dollars which is definitely more than your indian rupee currently and all of these things add up to a great transformation in your personality and the way you live your life global citizenship brings value to your profile you're doing a masters in australia or probably doing a masters in uk then you go to you go to do your job in canada or usa then you do some kind of an internship or some kind of a project in dubai or singapore and then you come back to india so just imagine the amount of experience that you are carrying the amount of high in your profile that you are already carrying in your cv and the amount of acceptance that indian companies will have after you have already created a global profile for yourselves and yes higher employability this is like a very important fact if you are doing a masters or a phd from any country outside of india which is a global rank institution indian companies will definitely lap you up they will definitely want to employ you guys and for that matter even if you want to stay back in countries like australia or usa or canada the employability rates are more than 100% in these countries also and when i say more than 100% it means that some people will have more than one job at the same time just certain examples to give you a perspective of where a lot of people from india and abroad have studied prominent personalities so barack obama and kaun the barack obama who was he any any inputs from students uh, former american president yes so it means that everybody is awake in the presentation great <laughs> then steve jobs steve jobs finished his studies from oregon uh, who was steve jobs founder of apple founder of apple corporation bill gates studied from harvard founder of microsoft founder of microsoft the dr manmohan singh uh, this is like a very proud moment for us because he studied from university of cambridge university of oxford former prime minister of india and the best part is that uh, cambridge and oxford both they actually have a scholarship award in his name so he was such a fantastic student at his time uh, such a fantastic scholar at his time that until today uh, there is this dr manmohan singh scholarship that is offered in cambridge and oxford to best students out there okay ratan tata founder of uh, tata group cornell university and harvard university so he did his undergraduate from harvard and then moved on to cornell in usa to uh, do his uh, post graduation his masters so these are certain uh, important uh, people that have uh, definitely studied from outside india and they came back to india and then used the principles used the global transformation that they had in their profiles to kind of help india to kind of help india to reach where it is today okay and obviously a lot of people came back and then settled down over here and ye to kuch prominent personalities hai but then definitely you will also have lot of people in your circles who have gone abroad studied uh, gained a lot of experience and insight and obviously gained a lot of money and then came back to uh, for that matter nagpur and then helped our city to grow okay so there are a lot of examples around also so what are the myths associated with studies abroad and we'll try and clear these myths with uh, certain facts the first and foremost myth that everyone has is that it is a very costly affair to go abroad and only rich people can afford this there are two facts that i would want to share one that is already written over here right in 2021 the last year more than 2 lakh students ended up studying abroad usme se bhi 75% of the students ended up studying in usa and this is like the most number of foreign education students anywhere in the world the most number of students flying from a country to foreign education is india right now and then followed closely by china so generally india or china ka aas paas hi competition rehta hai so ab ye 2 lakh jo bacche hain ye sare ke sare everybody is not a multi millionaire or a multi billionaire in india So where are these two lakh students coming from? Most of these students are coming from middle class, lower middle class backgrounds. And how are they going abroad? So just understand this perspective. For example, if you are a computer science graduate and you want to do a post graduation in computer science from a private university in India, right now the best private universities that are being offered are generally SRM University or VIT Bangalore. 
that offer a mtech or a msc uh, right there in chennai the fees for vit vellore well mtech or srm university is 10 lakh rupees for 2 years the hostel and accommodation fees is 5 lakh rupees for 2 years and the miscellaneous fees is around 2 to 2 1/2 lakh rupees for 2 years so roughly 18 lakh rupees is what is required in a good private university like lpu or amity or icfai or for that matter vit or srm in india so if these institutions are off charging you 18 to 20 lakh rupees just understand the difference uk is offering you 2 years of masters for 30 to 35 lakh rupees uk uh, usa and australia are offering you the same 2 years masters for 38 lakh rupees now how do you understand the difference 20 lakh rupees in india you end up give, getting a job of 3 and a half lakh rupees 40 lakh rupees in usa or australia you end up getting a job of 40 lakh to 50 lakh rupees so the starting salaries of people in usa or canada or australia is 20 25 30 lakh rupees because that is their standard of living over there so aap yahan pe 3.5 lakh rupaye ki naukri ke liye 2 saal 20 lakh rupaye ka ek course karoge aur aap ek 40 lakh rupaye ka course karoge jisse ki aapko 25 30 40 lakh rupaye ki naukri pehle saal mein lag jayegi so this is the kind of difference in the original salaries in the original Uh, packages that are offered to institutions are uh, offered to indian institutions are uh, offered to indian students studying abroad currently okay so yes it is costly but then definitely it is kind of an investment in your own education in your own career and this is the kind of investment jo ki aapko fatafat returns bhi dena ek hi saal do saal mein shuru kar dega unlike your indian uh, institutions my academic grades have not been good so there is no uh, gradation requirement as such if you have been something above 60 65% consistently there are a lot of institutions who will be accepting your scores who will be considering your profiles and you do not need to be a topper you do not need to be a 90 95 percentile topper to get into these institutions a lot of indian institutions uh, indian students have gotten admits to decently good rank top 200 top 500 ranked universities even with average amount of marks So, what are the major destinations that people from Nagpur, for that matter, have been considering? There is USA, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, UK, Ireland. All of these are in the top. So, if you just briefly talk about Australia, Australia offers quality education. The courses are available in almost every area of study. So, you are a arts student, you are a commerce student, you are a computer science graduate, you are a biotechnologist, for that matter, you are. a bca student a bachelor of computer application student or a bcca student everybody can get into these countries to do a masters in their area of study the best part is that in australia you can work 20 hours per week as a part time worker and then full time that is 40 to 45 hours per week during your holidays now why is this working being done a lot of people take loans and then they have to repay their loans In Australia, if you are working like twenty hours a week, so for every hour of working, you are getting seven to ten Australian dollars per hour. So you can imagine the amount of money. Currently, fifty rupees per uh, dollar is the price. So you can imagine the amount of money that you guys will be getting if only you work like twenty hours. That is like two to three hours a day. And this is generally the culture of these countries that students would want to work in an international office or in a subway or in some kind of a place where they can be offered this kind of money okay and everybody gets a part time job in australia after your course you can get up to 4 years of an extension of your post study visa that is 2 years of your student visa jab aap padhai kar rahe ho uske baad 4 saal ka stay bhi aapko wahan pe milega so within those 4 years you are required to secure a job so that your visa gets converted into a work visa and probably down the line after 4 and 2 that is 6 to 7 years you can actually apply for a pr or a permanent residency so those of you who are not wanting to come back can actually stay back and then end up becoming a citizen of that country bitvic are already having a lot of tie ups with very prominent institutions like qut monash adelaide macquarie western sydney newcastle griffith deakin rmit swinburne university of south australia 
So institutions like Monash, RMIT, Adelaide, these are in the top 10 best institutions of Australia currently. So uh, we are having tie-ups with these. So if you want to go to these universities in Australia, we are the right people to guide you, to uh, channel uh, you to these places. Then there is New Zealand, just below Australia. Again, a very fantastic destination for people to study abroad. A British-based education system, which means that you have to graduation for three years, which is the British system. Hai, you can actually go to this country and continue your education. All the state fund, all the universities are state funded for that matter, and all of them fall into the top three percent of the world. So you can imagine the amount of research, the best infrastructure, and the amount of money that is going into these universities that they fall into the top three percent of the world. There is definitely a PR opportunity available in New Zealand. New Zealand is among the easiest countries to get a PR or a citizenship long down the line. You get a three years post study visa. 15 years of education, as I told you, after your 12th, if you do a three year BSc, you will be welcome in these countries. The environment is good. People are good. It's a very safe and sound country. Uh, if you get into our partner institutions, definitely there'll be no application fees required. The whole application procedure can be free. And as such, until you get your visa, you'll not have to pay even your tuition fees in this country. So we are into a lot of tie ups even over there. I'll just quickly move ahead. Then you have Destination UK. Destination UK, again, UK is among the top destinations for Indian students, especially for NACPO students currently. As I told you, British education, ke se, uh, three year BSCs are actually accepted in UK very easily. It becomes a little difficult in US or certain other countries to accept a three year education. But then UK, New Zealand, Australia, these are places which you can accept BSc in three years. Affordable education, definitely, because UK is one of those countries in which if you have a two-year course and all the courses are credit-based, if you can finish your credits in one year, then your degree will be finished in one year. Right? So this is like a very flexible environment in which you can do your two-year course in one year time save a lot of money, save a lot of your accommodation, lodging, boarding money, and then start uh, looking for a job. There are two intakes. One is in August and one is in January. Uh, only IELTS is required. We will be discussing about these exams. There are master's degree of one year. Full-time job, 40 hours per week, as I told you. Uh, Part-time and a full-time thing that can be done during your studies. Scholarships are available. A ton of scholarships are available for studying in UK. Paid internships are also available and then you currently get a post-study visa of two years after you finish your course. That is, you can stay back for two years after you finish your course. So these are certain prominent university tie-ups that we have. A lot of universities you might have heard a lot of time uh, in newspapers, in films, in movies. Glasgow, Birmingham, Harriet Watts, Surrey, Newcastle, Bristol, Leicester, Queen Mary and Liverpool. All these are very prominent, very good universities. For IT, what are the popular courses? You have computer science, data analytics, data science, cyber security, information system, artificial intelligence, software, engineering, computer science, IT, IT, information system. Okay, so this is again repeating the whole thing. I don't think there are a lot of mechanical people over here. So I wouldn't want to talk on that. There are certain civil engineering courses also being offered across. If there is anybody from ETC, these are certain courses for ETC and electrical that are being offered across all these countries. So these are certain scholarships that Indian government and then the governments across the world offer to Indian students. And this is not an exhaustive list. This is just an example of four to five scholarships that are being offered to Indian students. There is a Fulbright Nehru Fellowship that is offered if you want to go to USA. Uh, this covers your tuition fees, airfare, and it also offers you a stipend every month. There is a Tata scholarship for studying in Cornell because Ratan Tata studied over there. There is a Commonwealth scholarship uh, which is offered for Indian students studying in UK. Inlax scholarship for studying in USA, Canada, and Europe. Then there is a National Overseas Scholarship Scheme uh, offered by Government of India, which 
is absolutely available for studying across the world. And then there is this Narottam scholarship program, uh, again, for studying across the world. Then uh, if any of the student falls into uh, a category uh, like an OBC or an SC or an ST category, right now the government of Maharashtra also offers a complete scholarship in which end-to-end -end money, all the tuition fees, all the stipend, all the airfare, everything is covered by the Maharashtra government. So uh, for that also a lot of uh, students can apply. Okay. Part-time jobs, so laws of most countries usually permit students to work up to 20 hours per week during study, full-time during holidays, that is 40 hours a week. So as I told you, most of these countries like Australia, US, everybody, they offer a minimum of six to seven dollars per hour. It can go up to as high as 12 to 14 dollars per hour. So that is a substantial amount of money and students from Nagpur itself have actually gathered six lakh to seven lakh rupees only by uh, working part-time for their two years of studies. What are our strengths and services? So we have been doing this for like 25 years now. We have 36 plus offices worldwide, tie-ups with more than 300 institutions. And more than 40,000 students have actually gone abroad, are living a very happy uh, life abroad, or they have come back to India, but then our student recruitment number stands at 40,000 plus right now. Along with all your application services, we also offer coaching modules for GRE, GMAT, SAT, IELTS, TOEFL, PT, etc. So we just have a quick look at these exams. To get into a master's or a PhD in USA or Germany or Canada, GRE or graduate record examination is what is required. The score is valid for five years and it is a 340 marks paper. 15,000 is the fees and Nagpur is a center for this exam. Now, as I told you, compared to your CAT, compared to your IIT gate, these exams are very simple. So GRE basically tests you on quantitative ability, which is basically your mathematical ability, but only until the level of 9th and 10th standard, not more than that. So you will not be having your Laplace equations or your uh, trigonometry or any of those uh, equations that you do not like. So these are basic questions on quants, which is called as your English paper. Then there is uh, on quants, which is called as your maths paper. And then there is verbal. Verbal ability is your English paper. So you, are, you will have a lot of uh, unseen comprehensions, antonyms, synonyms, fill in the blanks, crossword puzzles kind of exams. And there is a essay writing, which is called as analytical writing and assessment. So 170, 170, 340, and then from zero to six, you have an analyt analytical writing assessment paper. So this is like a paper which can be prepared for in two to three months. And you can definitely clear this exam and get into the best universities of the world. For your English proficiency. Now, when you're moving to a country like UK, Australia, US, anywhere, where English is spoken, you are also tested on your English proficiency skills on four parameters that is listening, reading, writing and speaking. So one exam that you need to clear is TOEFL that is majorly for USA test of English as foreign language. Two years validity, XO B smart guy paper and Nagpur is a center. So you have a reading section, a listening section, a speaking section and a writing section. We'll discuss more on this in the IELTS format. The other exam that a lot of students give is International English Language Testing System. Now, to get into Australia, New Zealand, UK, Canada, anywhere in the world, IELTS is one exam that can help you get there. This paper ke basis pe aapko major institutions mein GRE bhi nahi padega, right? So all your Australian, all your New Zealand, all your Canadian institutions, and most of your European institutions do not need a GRE. They only need an IELTS paper. And this is like a very easy paper. This is offered in Nagpur. 15,000 is the fees currently. What is the structure? In listening, you get a headphone. There will be people who will be speaking. Or jo wo bolenge, uske basis pe, there are questions that are written on a piece of paper and you have to solve them. In reading, you get unseen comprehensions, unseen passages, and then there are questions you have to solve them. In writing, you either get a letter or a small paragraph that you have to write about a topic. And in speaking, there is a person who asks you questions in English. That's it. 
so this is a purely english based paper there are no technical questions to be asked there are no mathematics no science nothing so even if you have to do a graduation a post graduation or a phd in a hyper technical field like computer science all you have to do is clear a english paper that's it you don't have to answer any technical questions okay so what are our services we will be giving you counseling for every institution for every country we will be helping you in selection of your university your country and your course the whole application and admission assistance thing is a big thing and it requires a lot of time and patience and we will be doing this for you so that you do not have to get into the grill of these things visa services applying for visa getting into the whole process procedure of applying for a visa is again a very long thing a cumbersome thing we will be doing that for you we will try to get as many scholarships for deserving students as possible depending on their profiles we have coaching for all these exams so jo bhi exam aapke liye applicable hoga we will be helping you out with that and remaining all the services for that matter a pick up from the airport ticketing insurance getting cash in your hand travel assistance loan assistance pre departure everything will be offered free of cost from viac we are also offering a free ielts and toefl coaching so we have batches that are already running every month we have a new ielts and a toefl batch that begins at our institution at our center in nagpur at uh, modi number 2 in sitabardi so you can come down attend these classes understand the procedure get into a free counseling talk to our counselors and try and assess whether you really want to go abroad do you really think abroad can be an option if it is not an option well and good but even if 1% of you feel that yes this can be considered as an option uh, imagine this is going to be a life changing decision for you so i'll just tell you uh, we are situated in modi number 2 sitabardi nagpur called anuvish house viic just opposite of uh, janki talkies so we will be happy to help you out also for that matter uh, if uh, the college makes certain amount of space available and if there are certain students counselors from our place or a teacher from our place can come down to your college and explain or probably counsel the students right in the heart of your institution if that is possible so the whole aim is that let the students focus on their studies and the remaining thing we will be doing so that aap log kisi tension mein nahi rahe hum log hi tension lenge thank you everyone so i hope uh, uh, we can move on to the questions now and i hope i have been clear enough uh, it has been a long presentation but i believe uh, i have still missed out on a lot of things it could have been longer so any any questions if you want to ask I can see a lot of students over here. I believe कुछ ना कुछ questions तो होंगे सबके. Student, please ask your questions. Please, students, you are free to ask the questions. Yes, Preet. Preet has uh, raised his hand. Um. Uh, good afternoon, sir. good morning yeah so as you said that um the syllabus of nagpur the course syllabus has not been updated since 15 to 20 years right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so while we uh, like even if we um complete ielts and all but when we go to another country for studying over there we might be uh, academically backwards so are there some classes which like uh teachers or uh, update our knowledge to the existing knowledges of our syllabus so generally what happens is uh, there are certain pathway programs that these countries offer okay so there are two types of pathway programs one is for people who are very weak in english so first of all to uh, brace up your english language skills they help you in getting to the level of english that they require in their courses and for that matter in very research oriented courses right like uh, if you are getting into a research oriented computer science field for that matter 
they will definitely offer you a three month pathway program in which you will be bridged to the level of their own students and then your actual classes begin so this is a, like a very valid question that you have asked so what indian students do is they they generally clear certain amount of certifications right here in india and then they apply but then yes uh, australia us everybody offers a pathway uh, so a pathway as the word suggests is basically a bridging course it's a two month three month bridging course and yes hota ye hai ki pehle do teen mahine indian students ke liye agar bridging course hai thode se tough jate hain but then ye do teen mahine ka time agar aapne nikal liya uske baad mein you get you become at par with all those australian or american students okay thank you sir welcome yes pratesh please ask sir what is the process of getting scholarship uh, and uh, after getting scholarship uh, how much amount uh, we have to spend uh, uh, after that okay so uh, pratesh what we'll do is we'll reverse the question so how much amount depends on the country that we are going to so for that matter if you are going to uk the amount is roughly 30 to 32 lakhs for 2 years this includes your tuition fees your lodging boarding accommodation food everything okay uh, for that matter in australia it jumps to 36 to 37 lakhs for 2 years and in usa it is roughly 38 to 40 lakhs now when do they offer a scholarship now there are two ways one is definitely the government scholarships that are being offered in india right now to wo to ek pura parallel procedure hota hai using the government means you have to apply for your government scholarships but then there are institutional scholarships or university scholarships what happens in uh, university scholarships is that once they check your profile once they check your sops your lors uh, the number of uh, courses that you have done the number of participations that you have done in competitive exams or in social services or in sports or the number of activities that you do other than your studies or any research projects that you have done ye sari cheeze jod ke a profile is created and when this profile is sent to the university they basically try and value your profile against the profiles of other institutions or up, uh, against the profiles of other students to so, isme hota ye hai ki agar aapka profile stand out kar raha hai so they would want you to come to that country so scholarship kab di jati jab aapka profile stand out kar raha hai और वो इंस्टीट्यूशन चाहता है कि आप किसी भी हालत में वहां पे आ जाइए ठीक है तो ऐसा नहीं होता है कि हम पहले से स्कॉलरशिप देख लें कि 30 परसेंट मिलेगी तो ही मैं जाऊंगा हमारा प्रोफाइल अगर बहुत अच्छा है तो इंस्टीट्यूशन चाहता है कि आप वहां पे आओ आप वहां पे एडमिशन लो वहां पे आके रिसर्च करो एंड वहां से रिसर्च आर्टिकल्स पब्लिश करो और उस बेसिस पे वो आपको ऑफर करते हैं कि आप थर्टी लो फोर्टी लो फिफ्टी लो आई गिव यूर एग्जाम्पल एंड दिस एग्जाम्पल आई गिव टू अट ऑफ पीपल इन नागपुर a girl from gadchiroli who studied in a naxal infested area uh, basic graduation kiya usne and total cost of her education bachpan se leke graduation ke end tak 10000 rupees bhi nahi raha hai she belongs to a very tribal family lived in a naxal infested village and based on the scholarships that have been offered to her she ended up in mit abhi aapne dekha tha mit duniya ka number 1 institution hai तो गडचिरोली की बच्ची है 100 परसेंट स्कॉलरशिप एम आई टी में गई है सो काइंड ऑफ एक मिथ डिस्पेलिंग फैक्ट है कि कहीं से भी आदमी कहीं पे भी जा सकता है सो so, कोई भी चीज कम नहीं है राइट आई गेस प्रीत हैज रेस्ड हिज हैंड अगेन ना ना दैट्स अ क्लच ओके ओके प्रतेश आई बिलीव आई हैव आंसर्ड योर क्वेश्चन thank you sir welcome are there any more students who want to ask questions i believe uh, ekdam se questions to nahi aayenge uh, but then definitely think about it agar aap bolna nahi chahte ho can even write it down in the chat box or for that matter we guys will be in touch with you so agar aap log abhi questions nahi puchna chahte to you can come down to our place or you can even Uh, send an sms or a whatsapp message to us and we will be happy to uh, solve your queries personally you keep asking a question in front of so many people may be a little difficult sometimes but then we can do it personally also doesn't matter uh, students actually very few times we get 
such a platform actually to ask any doubts so maybe not you maybe your friends or family member they are planning to go to the outside for higher studies so in that case you know whatever doubt that are coming in your mind so you are free to ask don't hesitate सर इंडिया में जब हम एजुकेशन लोन लेते हैं तो उसमें मेस फीस और हॉस्टल फीस इंक्लूड नहीं होता है क्या नहीं इंडिया में द एजुकेशन फीस इज इंक्लूडिंग ओनली योर ट्यूशन फीस बाकी का जो भी है वो ऊपर से आपको यू हैव टू पे डायरेक्टली एंड अगेन ट्यूशन फीस आल्सो इंक्लूड्स योर एटी परसेंट अमाउंट ट्वेंटी परसेंट अमाउंट आपको अपने आप देना होगा द मैक्स लोन दैट यू कैन गेट इज एटी परसेंट ओके बट वेन यू वेन यू स्टडी इन एन अब्रॉड इंस्टीट्यूशन सो ऑल द फीस इज बेसिकली डिपॉजिटेड विद द इंस्टीट्यूशन इट ओके बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ यूर इंस्टीट्यूशन इन ऑस्ट्रेलिया यूएसए एक्सेट्रा दे ऑफर यू इन कैंपस इन कैंपस जॉब ऑल्सो एंड देन फॉर दैट मैटर इन कैंपस अकोमोडेशन लॉजिंग बोर्डिंग एवरीथिंग ठीक है सो ऑल द अमाउंट इज डिपॉजिटेड इन टू वन अकाउंट एंड दैट इज वाई वहां के लिए जब आप लोन लोगे तो आपको लोन पूरा का पूरा एज इट इज मिलेगा बट इंडिया में आपको सिर्फ ट्यूशन फीस पे लोन मिलेगा सर वन ऑफ द क्वेश्चन व्हिच आई हैव इज दैट द लोनिंग प्रोसीजर दैट इज देयर सो वी गेट लोन्स फ्रॉम इंडियन बैंक्स एज वेल एंड द फॉरेन बैंक्स एज वेल सो सो इन कंपैरिजन लाइक व्हाट शुड आई कंपेयर इन बोथ द केसेस लाइक इफ आई एम अप्लाइंग फॉर लोन सेम एंड ऑफ फॉरेन ऑस्ट्रेलियन university from australian bank and an indian bank so which no, so if, if you are applying from india you will be applying only for an indian loan okay the amount that is secured from an indian loan is then transferred to an australian bank account of the institution okay so uh, you will not be getting an, a loan from an australian bank unless you are a citizen of australia okay so only in the circumstance that you have a relative or you have a sponsor that resides in australia or usa or in any of these countries and they are willing to sponsor all your education tabhi aap australian ya american money show kar sakte ho otherwise uh, the loan needs to originate from the country of your origin itself so if you are going from nagpur you have to apply for a loan from these nationalized or private banks in india itself okay okay sir Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I hope uh, the people who have asked questions can actually find some time and come up uh, to our office to have a good and a personalized counselling in which we can talk at length about what we have discussed right now. Uh, we can talk at length about the universities that are on offer. and anything that suits your profile so that you can take a very informed decision down the line for the others uh, we are sharing our numbers you can message us you can get in touch with us you can email us or you can definitely come and visit us at our office we also do a lot of spot admission days and education fairs in which uh, the delegates or the representatives of these universities directly come to our office or at our center and you can interact with uh, representatives of all these global universities directly uh, to dispel your doubts to clear your questions okay so we will be sharing these updates and these events that we uh, keep on doing every month uh, with your faculties and i hope the faculties will share with your students uh, i guess if there are no more questions we can uh, hand over to the mc of this event uh thank you sir your guidance and motivation will help the students in future and i'm sure that the knowledge they have gained today will definitely help them to fulfill their dreams and achieve their goals uh as we are at the end of the program i would like to propose a formal vote of thanks i am fully extremely grateful to thank everyone who made efforts to make this program a grand success first and foremost i thank you our uh, resource person of the day mr akash singh for his gracious presence and valuable guidance thank you sir for sharing your precious time with us i would like to thank our beloved principal dr k d thomas 
for always being supportive and motivating to conduct such programs. Thank you, sir, for your valuable guidance. I would like to thank Dr. Dilip Sadhankar, sir, coordinator of Puran, sir, for organizing today's webinar and made possible to execute this program very smoothly and effectively. I would like to thank to our technical team, Mr. Tino Joseph, sir, Mr. Rosa Zon, sir, and Mr. Amar Pimparkar, sir. Without their sincere efforts and technical support, this program would not have been possible. Last but not the least, I thank all the participants for their presence and active participation to make today's webinar successful. Thank you all. Thank you, Surbi. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone who joined and uh, to the principal and all the faculties. Uh, we are looking forward uh, to interacting with you guys more and more. And Pratesh, if uh, you can just SMS or WhatsApp us, I'll just share my number over here. So I'll uh, share the PPT with you. So my number is given over here. So if you just send me a hi on WhatsApp, I'll share the PPT. Thank you, everyone. So that's a wrap from our side. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, thank you Abbas, sir. sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Nilesh, sir. Thank you so much, Thank you, sir. Opportunity, right? I'll get in touch with you soon. Okay, sure, sir.